All right, this is MTG Buddha back again today. Um, we're going to go ahead and do this midweek magic and do the Phantom Sealed event. Um, the Phantom Sealed is, but you don't get to keep the cards, but you get to do a sealed event for Dominaria. So it's basically like doing a pre-release pre on here. Um, hey, we opened some pretty decent cards. Look at this. All right, so we opened an Johnny, so that's pretty nice. Um, we also opened this guy, um, Urtai. Um, Urtai is actually pretty good card um let's see this one the mana can be spent to cast legendaries add one mana among legendaries exile it and you can have target legendary game hex group and struggle okay so that's decent this is pretty good this is going to go good with the fact we have a johnny because this is white and this is white so white will be a good thing for us to do uh, we could probably throw this into our deck see what kind of fixing we have and we can maybe splash you know this guy or this guy um, this is definitely something I would be willing to splash into the deck. Um, yeah, so let's see what the rest of the cards look like. Hopefully you got to go to a pre-release this past weekend, um, and hopefully had some, had a good time. Uh, let's see, I'll tell you what, let's go over to the multicolors first. Let's go on and see what all we got. Okay, so we know we're going to take a Johnny, and we'll probably take this because the same colors are Johnny. Uh, we're going to throw that in. We'll just, we'll just go ahead and throw our dual lands in because we're more than likely going to play all the dual lands. We're probably going to want to splash things. So, all right, so we've got this guy, which has double green. Um, and then dual land wise, we have one, two, three, four dual lands that will make us red. So, this guy should be fairly easy to splash. So, he might wind up making the deck. Um, this one, if we have several enlist characters, this would be good. Um, and with us being probably in green and white, we should have enlist creatures because green and white is where you get a lot of those. Um, let's see, so we'll definitely want to do this if we're going to be trying to splash and stuff. This is something that will probably wind up making the cut as well. Um, let's see. All right, so this is an Elisp creature. This is actually just a pretty good creature on its own. It's a 1-3 with Vigilance, which isn't the greatest, but if you have like a another 2-power creature or something that you can enlist it with, it becomes a 3-3 three, three with Vigilance when it attacks. So it's pretty decent. This Artillery Blast, especially if we're splashing all these, anything that says Domain is probably going to be good in our colors. Um, the Banal Sleeper is really good, especially if we're able to produce black. And currently it looks like we have... One, two, two ways to produce black is all we're going to have based on this. So we will probably play it, but maybe not. Um, this is definitely going to be good if we're in green, white, especially because we should reliably be able to kick this. Um, this is just a really good card. Um, even though it's kicks for black, we'll still definitely want to play that. Um, this one's all right. This is pretty good to do enlist stuff with. This is a really good card. We'll put both of those in. Another enlist creature. Um, let's see. This is probably going to make the cut. We'll stick this over here because it's a maybe. This will probably make the cut as well, especially since we're playing this. We want things that make tokens. Um, this gets extra. This will definitely make the cut. This will probably make the cut. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the green first before we do. Well, you know what? This is probably coming in anyway, so we'll stick this over here. Um, let's see. So this is this does say domain, but it's a just a combat trick. So I don't know if the other one necessarily make the cut. Um, so tail swipe and bite down should make the cut. This will definitely make the cut. It'll help us splash our other colors. Um, let's see. So we have a domain and we have the territorial morrow. So currently we've got forty one cards down here. Um. Let's see. Were there anything in any of the other colors that were really good that we might splash? Now, we do have quite a bit of ways to make red. So let's check the red stuff out first. Um, this enlist creature is pretty decent, especially if we're going to be do if we know we're going to want to do enlisting. Um, that'll be pretty decent to play. This is something that could be played. Um, See, this is actually a decent creature. This is good if we do, do the enlisting stuff, and this is also a good creature to have. We could play this land. 
Um, let's see. Add one mana of any color. I don't know as though we necessarily need to throw that in there. Um, don't really need the defender. Probably not going to wind up playing any of these three. Um, let's see. Don't think there's any good red there. I do like having kill spells, but this being double black and not having a lot of ways to produce black, probably not going to do any of these black spells. Um, blue wise, we do have the phasing of Zalfar. Uh, the phasing of Zalfar is a pretty decent card. Don't know as though I necessarily want to play that though. Um, with us going wide, it could be interesting if we have a lot of tokens um, because we could replace our one ones with two twos. So that could be interesting. Um, this would go search. Let's see, so I could cast a one or two mana from my hand. And I could copy an instant or sorcery. Let's see. So we've got instants and sorceries. Let's move them into their own pile. Um, let's see. Creature, creature. All right. So here's another instant or sorcery. Another instant or sorcery. Okay. And Johnny could have his own pile. Um, let's see. So I don't really see any blues right now that I'm just super psyched about playing. And I don't know as though I necessarily want to put this guy in either with it being already having too many cards. So we're going to see what we got down here that we can maybe cut for some of these things over here. So our curve right now looks pretty decent on Creature Rise. We have quite a few two drop creatures. Um, let's see how many endless things do we have. We have one, two, three. So we have three endless creatures right now. Um, this would give us a fourth and or fifth. We definitely, I think I definitely want to have the Shipping Devastator in. Um, I think that this is a good enough payoff for Enlist that we would definitely want to add yet. I think these other spells could be cut over here. Um, that would put us currently at 44. So we need to go in and make a little bit more cut. So we've got 19 creatures so far. So... We could probably cut some two twos. This one is good if I use it to enlist. This is good for domain. This is just like a really good way to get a creature back. Um, this is going to be a little hard to kick because we only have the two black sources in the deck. So I think I might actually go ahead and take that out. Even though it is a really good card, it's not going to actually do a whole lot for me over here. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven instants, and we have an Ajani. So we have eight non creature spells. Um, let's see. Could probably take something out of the three drop slot. So like, we'll probably take this guy out because, we do, again, with the black, isn't going to be easy for us to get. We have two black sources, and that's it. Whereas with these, um, with this guy and this will be easier for us to get the red with because we do have this. It'll help us to cast that. Uh, this will also help us cast a Johnny. Um, i surprised these aren't legendary, but... Um, yeah, we want to make sure we have a lot of white permanents to go along with this. Because this, along with this, and having a lot of white permanents is going to be really good. So I might actually cut this guy... I don't want to cut any of the kill spell type things and the tricks. This is going to work well at this as well. Um, so I think we might actually cut this one. And we might cut one of these and we'll go get another white creature. We'll put that white creature back in. It's going to give us another white creature. It's going to keep us on curve pretty well. Yeah, I think this looks pretty decent actually. So we're going to try this. We'll see how this works. You, with the midweek magic, you basically just play until you get to the wins that you need. There's no, um, you get a certain number of tries. It's free to do. Um, a lot of times they'll have some kind of stipulation to where it's like, uh, it's basically you bring your best popper deck for standard in or whatever. Um, okay, so we have blue, black, and red. We don't really have a way to make green, so I don't think this is capable. Especially on the play. 
If we had if one of these made green mana, this I would snap peek this. If one of these made green, but it doesn't. And considering I have green creatures in hand and green spells, um, I think we're gonna mold. All right, so at this point, I think we just go ahead and keep this and we stick the Shiv and Devastator on the bottom. Or, okay, well, I think we stick the Morrow on the bottom because we can cast this at any cost. I mean, if we really just wanted to, we could cast it for one. So I don't think we toss it on the bottom because we do have red. So I think we do this, and then next turn we play this. All right, and we hit a green mana, so we're not casting this for zero, obviously. Um, so I think next turn we play this and kick it, putting the counter on it. So it's going to get the counter and be a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and we'll have Tell Swipe available if we, need, if we want to do that next turn. So we could potentially Tell Swipe and play another creature. Oh, and we have Johnny. Let's see. And we can actually cast a Johnny by using Phyrexia Mana. I can't remember exactly what he does. Let's go over what he does real quick. Reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature or planeswalker, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it on the bottom of your library. Distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 3 target creatures. They gain business until the end of turn. You get an emblem whenever you cast a creature or a planeswalker spell. Opponent gets 2 plus counters. All right. So I don't think we want to cast a Johnny right now. I think we want to get a little more presence on board. So I think what I want to do is I want to cast this without the kicker. And then I want to cast this, targeting this and targeting this. and Because I get to gain life that way. This creature doesn't die. I gain life. And then I get to attack for three right here. So he either has to decide to block or what have you. So he didn't block. So the next turn, if he doesn't have a second creature, um... If he has like just one more creature and it's not anything much bigger than either of these, I can cast a Johnny and have creatures to protect a Johnny. Um, I, I think I just don't block here because I feel a trick. I expect he's got some kind of combat trick that would get my creature off the board and save his creature. So we're not going to block. We're just going to take it. And if he wants to go ahead and cast the trick to get some extra damage in, that's fine. Okay, so he's going to have a way to attack a Johnny. Because he's got the chick. So, now, question is, do I play a Johnny? Or do I play this out right now? And have a little more mana available next turn. Um, let's see. I could play this for two. And have a blocker for the chick. But I do think he has some kind of combat trick in his hand. So... Um, so if I do this in plus a Johnny, he goes to five. If he has a combat trick, the combat trick I think he has is probably the plus three, plus one. So it would knock a Johnny down to one. I think, I think we're going to plus play this because we're short on mana. We haven't hit a land. So we'll play this. And then I think we just attack with both. I don't think we even bother blocking here. Leave him back to block. We'll attack, gain a couple of life, do some more damage. Kind of put him on the defensive a little bit at this point because he's down to 12 and I'm at 24. Uh, this will have to attack. It doesn't have a choice. Okay, so he's got the balance leader. So, yeah, I think next turn. Okay, and he's going to tell swipe. So, of course. All right, so, okay, so we hit a land. So, I think what we do here is just pass, and we leave this up to potentially get rid of this. Because we block it here, give it a lifelink indestructible, and plus one, plus one, and get the 4-4 four, four off the board. Because that's, well, that actually might be the thing we want to get off the board. Um, okay. And of course, we can't, can't block that. All right, so we'll go to my turn. All right, I hit a land. So I could cast this for four, make it into a four four. Yeah, let's do that. Auto pay, it's gonna get haste. And we'll pull these back. We'll just attack with this. Because he has no way to block yet. So he's on a two turn clock at this point because the Phoenix chick cannot block. Okay, now he has a reach creature now. So I'm gonna take some damage. But I do have this to save my guy and get this reach creature off the board. 
So I think what I do is block that there. I'm not worried about the death touch. I just block that. And then I move to combat. And attack with this. And then I use this trick to get rid of his creature. That's going to be able to block it next. So, plus one, plus one, lifelink, indestructible. It gets domain. So it is going to stick around next turn. But next turn, I can cast a Johnny and toss creatures on counters on this guy to make him bigger. Yeah, I could always minus three him and put three counters on this guy to make him into an 8-8 so it's even harder for him to block. A Johnny would die on the swing back, but oh well. They would put him, and he hasn't a Johnny. Okay. Did they just give everyone a Johnny's? What's going on here? Alright, he's going to shoot at counters. So does he attack with this now? He does. Okay. Uh, oh, and it has Vigilance, just right. Okay, so yeah, I guess he does attack with this. So 5, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to say no blocks. Take the 12. All right, so we'll play this land. I'll play my own Ajani. Uh, we'll just pay regular mana. That's fine. I will give three counters. Uh, I'll put one here. Submit to those two. We'll put two on this. Um, and I will attack his life. So now he has to block with his 5-5 five, five if he doesn't want to take 6 and he, he takes it. Okay. So he's going to be able to kill my Johnny if he wants to. So he gets another flying creature. He's going to get to gain two life. Yeah, okay, whatever, buddy. Um, okay, let's see what else he does here. So does he even attack? Honestly, if I was him, I think I would have gone and attacked with the Phoenix Chick. I mean, I think I just, I'm priced him to block him there. Yeah. So if I was him, I would have attacked with the Phoenix Chick as well. Um, okay, so we're going to go on and kick this. With Kicker, so we get two 1-1s. One um, let's get the Forest. Um, let's go ahead and plus one. All right, and we'll go ahead. Oh, and I, do I not have a man to cast that? Nope, I don't. Um, so the question is, do I attack? It doesn't have vigilance. If I attack, he has to block. He's probably just going to block with this and keep his 5-5 five, five back. Um, if I don't then I would have to chump with my two one ones. And I would take four, five. Um, I think I just have to attack and force him into blocking. Well, he can double block, though, and kill my guy. So, no, I don't think I attack. I think I just hold back. He found another creature. Uh, it's going to... Your in-step creature's power is greater than its space power. Okay. He's probably going to get one once because these are greater than their base power, and I think that counts. So he's going to put a counter there. Now it's now a 6-6. Six, six. All right. And then I am priced into chump blocking, I guess. Yeah, I think I just have to take chump block. All right, let's go ahead and plus one. Bottom. All right, let's go ahead and play this. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, he's he's 
built his board out and we haven't been able to build ours. So that's kind of kind of rough there. I don't know if I maybe should have played the Ajani earlier. It's possible that I should have played the Ajani earlier. Um, let's see what we will block here. We will block this and we'll block this, I think. We take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we're good. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. I think we just die. It's not like we're, it's not like we're losing any money or anything. We just get to play another game. So, a little incentivized to keep even sketchier hands in this because of the fact that it's not really for money or anything. So, yeah, I think I might should have played the Ajani earlier. I might should have played it on like turn three and just started going to town. But I think we keep this. I mean, we've got Ajani in hand. We've got access to red, green, and white, which are our primary colors. Um, I don't think we go ahead and play this on turn two, though. Or we might. We might. Playing that on turn two might be the right thing to do. Yeah, because he doesn't have a creature right now. I think we play this without kicker. Because we can next turn play this. And at worst case scenario, we plus it and try to see if we can hit another creature off the top. And save this back to block to protect a Johnny. So he's going to make us both sack a creature. Okay. So yeah, so I think I do go ahead and play a Johnny right here. I think I go ahead and play it. Yeah, I think we just go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and get him out and we plus him. Um, unless he has some kind of hasty creature. Um, do I want that? One, two, three, four. I think I might actually want that. No, I don't think I do. I think we're just going to throw that on the bottom. Because I've only got four drop creatures in hand. I think I've only got one five drop. I think this is my most expensive one. Okay, so he just played a flying creature. Which is going to hurt for a Johnny. Um, so we will play this. And then, do we play this guy? Okay, well, we'll go ahead and plus a Johnny. Yeah, we'll go ahead and plus a Johnny. Uh, I think we put the land on bottom as well. We've already played our thing that needs black mana. Um, I think we play this guy and get him on the battlefield. And then next turn, we can always bite this down. He's going to hit this for two, unless he has a pump spell and gets the Johnny off the board. And if he has a pump spell, then he just has a pump spell. There's nothing I can do about it. All right, so I think we go ahead and we plus a Johnny. Do we get a creature? We do not get a creature. At this point, I think I... don't think I want the land again. Um, so I think we're going to play this. Um, we're going to bite down. Getting rid of his creature. Of course, he's going to have some kind of spell to make it down. Idiot. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to go and get a land out of our deck then. So we're going to go get, what do we want? I guess we take a green. Or we take a red. We already got two green. We got two white. I'll tell you what, we'll take a red. Um, and then we're going to attack. Because I can't block it anyway. So there's reason, no reason not to attack. So he's got red, green, white, black, and blue. So he's got full domain. So he gets to look at five. Well, that's kind of crappy. That is kind of pretty. So he's going to hit up Johnny for two more than likely. Unless he has a pump spell, we'll still have a Johnny for at least one more turn. Him being able to get around the bite down really hurts. 
Okay, and he's going to put the counter on this to kill a Johnny off, of course. So a Johnny's going down. All right, so. This only returns a creature. Doesn't return a planeswalker, and I don't have black men anyway. So I think we play this and get it out. Um, I think we go ahead and attack the three. See what he does. Does he block? And then I'll go ahead and play this because I don't have black men right now to be doing the kicking anyway. So I'll just go ahead and play it. Right, and he's going to impulse. All right. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to do a stipulation draft uh, before long and post it. Um, I haven't decided on a stipulation yet, but I'm going to make a stipulation for myself. And I'm going to do a stipulation draft and see what happens. Uh, it could be a very janky draft if I make the stipulation. So, because whatever the stipulation is, it's going to require me to play the cards that I'm required to take. I'm leaning towards, if there's a legendary in the pack, taking the legendary and required to play all the legendaries that I take. So, it could be very interesting. Because I could wind up, because it's more than likely would have wind up five colors with just a bunch of legendary creatures. So it could be very interesting. We'll see what happens. But does he have a spell? He does. Okay, so he has this chick. So it'd be nice to have a way to kill that thing. And he's going to put that back in my hand. That's annoying. All right, so question is, do I attack with this and enlist this? I don't think I do. I think I hold this back to be able to block this if he attacks with it. Okay, so this has to block this turn. <laughs> How about you kiss my butt, dude? We're going to double block. So now you get to decide which one you want to kill. And I get your guy off the board. So take that. All right, so we're going to enlist. Boop. Enlist. So now we're attacking with the bat board. All right. And he's got the Defiler. Of course he does. Alright, so let's go ahead and list. And we'll attack with this. Enlisting this. So we're pricing him into blocking something with the Defiler that will kill the Defiler, hopefully. Of course, he's probably got a combat trick. No? Okay. Cool. I'm okay with that trade. I have several things in my deck that will make tokens, so we could be ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, for seven. Yeah, he concedes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so the defiler is just—it's so good. Oh. Uh, or Devastator, not Defiler, because this Devastator is so good. He's, he can get big. You draw him late game, drop him. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. All right, honestly, so we got a Body Launderer as a prize. Nice. So here we're guaranteed to get at least a rare. Yeah. So the Body Launderer was our card we got there. I did a quick draft on my phone or, uh, earlier with, I did it with, Streets of New Japan, and I actually drafted the Body Launderer, but I only draft, I only got to play him one time throughout the draft. Um, 
uh, I kind of want to keep it. It's not a good hand. And honestly, it's like I said, this is, I'm, if I don't win, it's not a big deal. I just get to play another game. If it works out, great. Uh, yeah, so we'll play this. So at turn three, I can play the guy that gives me one ones. Okay, so we will play this. The question becomes, do I play a Johnny and just tick him up this turn? I think I do. I think I play a Johnny and tick him up. He's going to come in at two because I paid for example. Hang on. So I tick him up to three. Uh, I leave that on top because I do want another land. Red land is not necessarily exactly what I want, but I can play this. And then next turn, I can play this after that. And it'll get plus two plus two because two creatures run over the battlefield when I do this. So, yeah, I think turn three a Johnny with nothing on the board. And of course, he's just going to search for a land here, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that, I think that was the right play, dropping him out and being able to start plusing him. So now we play this, play this, plus a Johnny again, and we got a creature, so nice. So next turn, if I draw a land, I can play, if you know what land I draw, I could play this scout. Or I could play this for sure. But I've already, he's already seen this, but it is a 1-1, one, one, and I don't want to be having to block that. Okay, so he's got that. That's annoying. Um, let's see. Do I want to... Okay, I think what I do is play this to give him plus 2, plus 2, so he goes to a 4-5. And then I put counters on creatures and give them vigilance for the turn. So yeah, we'll minus three, put a counter here, counter here, counter here. Submit. And we'll attack with a five, six. And then if I need to, I can always block that with this. Although he's gonna get, does he attack a Johnny though is the question. Does he go at a Johnny or me? If he goes at a Johnny, I think I just let a Johnny eat it. Because the giant's going to die no matter what. Because it says trample now. But it doesn't have vigilance. So does he have a creature to go after it? Because if he doesn't have another creature. He might not even actually want to attack. Because if he attacks with this. Then he's taking a bunch of damage. Okay he's going to bounce that. That's what he's going to do. So yeah, so he's probably going to be taking a Johnny out. All right, so let's see what I get. Do we have anything to follow it up? No. Okay, so I play this land, and I think I play this back. Up. I think I play this out now, and then I attack with both of these. So he's probably going to jump with one of them. Yeah. Does he have a spell? No. All right. So now next turn, I can play this out. Because I'll have access to the double white. So one, two, three. Yeah, I can play this and this next turn. But I think that might just be better than playing this. If I take five this turn, fine. If he wants to just try to fly over in there, okay. Um, fact or fiction? We'll do that. He can either have the, the one domain creature that he can't cast this turn, or he can have the land. He can have the land, the spell that he can't cast. Yeah, I figured he'd probably take that. 
Of course, he can't cast it this turn because he has no green mana to do it. All right, so he's got three, two. Okay, so I think I go ahead. See, I cast this, right? Yeah, I think I cast this. Move to combat. And I attack. I attack. Let's see, do I enlist? Mm, no, I think I just attack with both of these and have this available. Because I was going to say, he's going to block with the 3 2. I'm going to take up the shield, get some life link. So I'm going to gain a little bit of that life back that I'm taking off of the flyer. And then next turn, I can cast this and this. This is a one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll have six mana next turn. So two, four. That would take seven to cast that. If I draw an untapped land, I can cast this, this, and this all in the same turn. And this becomes a seven, seven. Yeah. So why is that a five five? Oh, because it's an elf. I didn't realize that was an elf. Hmm. Okay. So now the question is, does he attack with this? He does. Um, I was gonna say, if he's attacking with this, there's no way I'm blocking that. Because that just means there's a trick coming. Um, let's see, what's he got available right now, mana-wise? So mana-wise, he's got one, two, three. He's got three mana available. Um, so again, I think we give him one thing or the other. Take something that he can cast this turn, or he takes something that he can't cast until next turn. He took the three. Okay. So he could cast this right now, but he can't kick it. He could just cast it as a one-one. So he'd have another body on the battlefield. Yeah. So he's got seven. Okay, so he drew a tapped land. So I think I play this and this. Um, I think I enlist. No, we attack and enlist to this chick. So now it's a 10-4, so he kind of has to block this. So I get that 5-5 five, five off the board. So now he's kind of in a spot where I don't know if he even attacks with this at this point. I mean, he could attack with both the flyers. But if he does, he casts this and he maybe has one more creature in his hand. But then he's taking 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You know, he'll be taking a lot of damage on the backswing. I mean, he knows I have this. He doesn't know about this card. So he's going to attack for five. He has three mana available with black, red, and blue. And he can only cast something with one red or one black pip. Um, I don't think we give him this. I think what we do is give him this because he can't cast it this turn. So we either give him the option to take this. You know, I think we put this here. So he can either take something he can cast this turn, or he gets all these cards and has something he can cast next turn. So he took the three cards. Okay. So if we would left this with any lands, he would have taken the lands in this instead of this. I think if we'd stuck this by itself, he would have taken the other package. All right, so we have, oh, nice. All right, so we're going to play, um, I'll tell you what, what we're going to do first. Let's see, choose target, you control, uh, and target, you know, 
cast a spell during your main phase, gets plus one plus one, and then they fight. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cast this. Do I have green in this area? I want to tap it so that I have green available. Let's go white, blue, white. All right, so we'll cast this. He already knows about this. We'll see if he has a counter spell. No, okay. So we're going to do this. This is going to fight this. Yes. I have the ward too, because I have this and this. So we get hit rid of his thing, it's going to kill us. Honestly, I could have done it to this and then just attacked out. And probably killed him. But I think this is the better thing to do here. If he has a trick, I might get blown out. Oh yeah, so he's gonna domain and kill me over yeah, that's I should have done it with the death touch creatures, what I should have done. Um that was stupid on me. All right, so screw it. We're just attacking. Yeah, we'll keep that. Because I can always block it with this next turn. He goes to five. Yeah, I should have done that with the death touch creature. Is what I should have done. That was that was my fault. I screwed that up myself because I should have done the tail swipe with the death touch creature. So no matter what he did, it was going to die. So even if he played a domain, it would have died. But then he would have just used the domain next turn to trample over and kill me. So honestly, at this point, we're just dead. Yeah. All right, so we've won one out of three so far with this deck. Let's see if we can get to that third win. Uh, we've got our main colors, so I'll say we go for it. Play this. I think we go ahead and drop this on turn two. Yeah. So, if he attacks, do I block? He did not attack. Okay. So, yeah, I think we played this this turn so that we have the creature. And we pass. And then next turn, I think we play this. And then we can play a Johnny the turn after that. So yeah, so we'll play this land, use this to cast this, and then the next turn we play a Johnny. So yeah, so we will do this. Getting three one ones. Pass the turn. And then we can play a Johnny and we have a, a wall of blockers for a Johnny. Oh, he's going to take something from me. What's he taking? He's going to take this. Yep. Well, at least he did that now and not when I had a Johnny up. So we'll play this and then we will play a Johnny. And we're just going to play it for normal mana. And we will plus a Johnny. We got a creature. Good. No attacks because we want to be able to block and protect a Johnny. I would like to get a Johnny up and ultimate a Johnny. That would be really cool. I had never got to do the ultimate. What's the ultimate? Uh, cast a creature of Planeswalker. Target opponent gets two points. Ah, nice. Nice. Yeah, we want to... If I get him to six next turn, the turn after that, I'm just going to ultimate him right away. I'm not going to bother waiting to ultimate him. 
and let him go to seven and then ultimate him so he stays around. No, we're just going to ultimate him right away. All right, so let's play this land. Let's go ahead and plus a Johnny to start with. All right, so we got that. Okay, so I think we play this instead. Yeah, we play this, and then we bite down. Well, I don't have the mana to get rid of that right now if I bite down. Uh, I think we just pass and hold this up. So if he attacks, I can always do that. So he's got, this has Vigilance and Ward. Um, zombies have Vigilance whenever another legendary creature dies. Okay. Yeah, so we would rather bite down that. Yeah, that is something I would much rather bite down. So does he attack? Because, I mean, you kind of got to try to get a Johnny off of its ultimate. So, okay, so we will pass, go to blockers. So we will block with this. We will block with this. And I think we just go ahead and double block here. Try to get all these creatures off the board if we can. Yeah. Okay, do I use this? I don't think I do. Unless he has some kind of trick. So that doesn't have death touch, so. So he gets three scry triggers. So what I do instead now, now that that has died, um, I will bite this down at the end of turn with the death touch creature to get rid of this off the board. All right, so we're going to bite down death touch creature to there. So that goes off the board. So we have a giant nice and clean. Um, so I tell you what, we're actually going to go ahead. Do I plus him or do I go ahead and minus him? You know, I think I'm going to go ahead and just plus him at this point. Um, I think we bottom that at this point. How many lands do we have? Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six. I think we bottom it. Yeah, we bottom that. And then I think we play this and hold this up. And then I think we go to attack with this. We just attack. No, no enlist. And then I think we just enter. So we have this available. So we, we cleared his board. If we hadn't cleared his board, I would not have bothered plusing again. I would have just went ahead and ultimated him. Um, do I do? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do this now. Life like an indestructible. So he does get scribed, bottoms, bottoms. Hopefully that means he didn't have a creature. He does have a creature, but it's not a great one. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get an emblem for a Johnny. So we're going to go ahead and cast this for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Because we're going to keep this available. So he gets two poison counters. This gets plus one, plus one. We attack with both of these. We just attack, not a list. If he wants to kill a Johnny at this point, okay, fine. All right, there we go. Yeah, that worked out really good. That worked out much better. All right, so let's see what our prize was. We got a rare. Okay, it was Katosi. All right, so we'll go for the last one and see what we get for trying to get this last one in. And as soon as we finish this, we'll finish the video up. I'm not actually sure how long. Let's see, we've been going for 49 minutes, so we're at about 50 minutes. So, yeah, I think we keep this. Um, we'll, play, so we'll play this turn one. Um, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and play this turn two. If we draw... Um, another spell that we could play we'll play it instead of playing this but if we draw another tap land we'll play the tap land and then just play this as a two two or a two three but if i draw something else okay so yeah so we'll go ahead and play this and hope to draw a land uh, pass 
So we have the Shivan Devastator, which we can play for, you know, whatever we want to do it for. So I can give this plus one, plus one, but it has to be on my main phase. If these fought right now, they would just trade. So does he attack? I mean, honestly, if I was him, I probably would just attack right off of the trade, try to get the life linker off the board. Um, so I think what I do here is bite down. And then attack and get two more life. So we gained four life that turn. Because we got two off the bite down and then, yeah, okay. So now I think we play this guy. Is that what we play? Uh, or do I play this one? Hmm. Hmm. Don't have any reason to play this right now. I think we play this. And we pass. I mean, worst case scenario, next turn I can do this on my main phase and have these two fight. I mean, I'd lose this, but I'd get rid of his five. If he attacks, I could always just double block. He's going to kill this, and I gain two life, and I get to keep this around. Yeah, if he attacks, I would say, if he attacks, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of pricing to do that. Make him get rid of my 3-3. Three, three. I gain two life. Get rid of his big guy. All right, and I drew a land, so that's nice. So I think, let's see, one, two, three, four. So I can play this for four and just attack him for four. Yeah, I think we do that. Yeah, and then we just attack. Honestly, that, there's no reason to not attack with that because he's got two defenders. He's not going to be attacking me back. I might as well go ahead and gain the two life when there's no risk of anything because he was tapped out. Okay, so he kills that. That's fine. I expected something like that to happen. It would have happened, you know, even if I'd had more mana on him. So, okay, so we play this. Nice. So we get the Defiler out. Okay, and then next turn we play this. Um, sure, we'll attack. Gain two more life, why not? Okay, so he's going to kill it. Okay, that's fine. I'd rather him use that trick on this, on that, than on this. So, so he's doing the whole defender thing. Alright, so we will play this chick and we're going to pay two mana. Because that's what I want to do. Uh, and then we're going to play this. And we're going to pay two mana. Because that's what I want to do. And he's going <laughs> to... Okay, and then he succeeds. He, he succeed. Yeah. He's like, okay, that's good enough. Yeah, because I get to make all the extra little tokens. Because the defiler makes the tokens. And then she makes extra tokens. So, yeah. Alright. So we got the prize. What did we get? We got a style for a Phoenix chick. That's cool. All right. So we have finished our event. So it only took us 53 minutes to finish. So that's not too bad. Going in and building and everything and playing to get three wins. So we went, what did we do? We went three and two. So that's not too bad, actually. Um, all right. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, if you haven't played the Midweek Magic, go in and try it. Uh, it's free every week when they do Midweek Magic. I'll probably do a video every week for Midweek, midweek Magic events. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Have a good day.